Matson, celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona electric vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on your news leader, what role will the island play if National Guard plans to cooperate with Taiwan? Plus, with the rising costs of gas, food and power, our Daniel Perez spoke with some residents on how they're being affected. And three more men are arrested in Saturday's Paseo incident. These stories and more right now on KUAM News Primetime. Hafi and good evening everyone. Welcome to Primetime. I'm Tomas Manglonia. Glad you can join us. The U.S. is planning on cooperation between its National Guard and Taiwan's military. There are reports that Hawaii's National Guard could be tapped for the partnership. What could this mean for Guam? Here's the latest. The U.S. Department of Defense is proactively planning cooperation between the U.S. National Guard and Taiwan's defense forces. That's according to Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen, who in a meeting with U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth gave little details on that front, but the U.S. program pairs guard units with other countries to assist with training. International media report that with the growing threat of China's reach, Taiwan could partner with Hawaii's National Guard. There is tremendous support for Taiwan within the legislative branch. Um, our president um, has shown his support for Taiwan. You've heard from our military. And as a member of the legislative branch, I will tell you it is a bipartisan agreement. The White House walked back statements by President Biden while in Asia, where he said the U.S. will defend Taiwan if it's attacked by China. While the exact details are few, tensions continue to rise. As the president said, uh, our one, uh, one China policy has not changed. Uh, he uh, reiterated that policy in our commitment to peace and stability across, uh, across the Taiwan Strait. Uh, he also... Uh, uh, highlighted our commitment under the Taiwan Relations Act uh, to help uh, provide Taiwan uh, the means to defend itself. Could those means mobilize the Guam National Guard? We asked Adjutant General of the Guam National Guard, Esther Agigi. First, is the Guam National Guard ready to assist if called on? She says yes. The Guam National Guard stays ready for whatever comes our way, including pandemic response, natural disaster recovery, homeland defense, or fighting and winning our nation's wars. We also asked who has the authority to mobilize the Guard for a mission in Taiwan. She told KOAM, under Title 32, our Commander-in-Chief is the Governor of Guam. We may also be activated by the federal government under Title 10. Governor Lulian Guerrero is taking some time off to recuperate after attending a gubernatorial debate Tuesday night. That's according to Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio, who provided media outlets an update at a groundbreaking ceremony in Santa Rita Sumai. Well, today I just want to thank everybody, of course, for all of the good feelings for the governor. She's in very good condition, very good spirits. Uh, she's getting, getting, of course, the best care possible um, and uh, look forward to her return to work in a few days. As we reported, the governor received medical attention after she began experiencing coughing and shortness of breath while participating in a scheduled debate. It comes just as the governor is to hold the State of the Island Address next Tuesday. Guam Office of the Governor Communications Director Crystal Pacos and Augustine couldn't confirm the exact date as to when she'll be back on the job. And with soaring gas prices, food and utilities, how are island residents coping? Daniel Perez spoke to a few residents to get their two cents on the issue. There's a worry hanging over Telefofo resident Tiana Sakaba's head. As a single mother, she's already feeling the squeeze of the price of living on Guam. With everything going up nowadays, it's just hard to get from point A to point B. From gas to food and now even utilities skyrocketing to an alarming rate, Sakaba is just one resident struggling to keep up. So, you know, coming up here to spend family time is definitely a must for me and being able to do that with my daughter and her cousins, you know, but um, with the gas being over $6, you know, it definitely does um, affect us a great deal. Just the spending and what we need to spend on. And many more sacrifices must be made. Sakaba said she's cut out most of the unnecessary activities in her life, including dining out. The power and water going up, um, 
you know, the cost of food, um, you know, everything does affect us. Uh, we try our best to, you know, uh, help each other out as much as we can. Uh, but I would say, you know, um, we just do our best. Agat resident James Bell understands that some increases to the cost of living are justifiable, including gas, which he says is an international commodity. But some things are not so justified. Uh, I think some businesses are taking advantage of this to raise prices and just make a little extra money while they can. We know some people who are really pretty poor and uh, the young lady just got a job and it's making maybe $600 a month and they took half of her food stamps, 300 and some odd dollars of her food stamps away. I mean, why would you even want to get a job if they're going to take half of, half of your salary away, right off the top? Bell said it's a difficult time for everyone with the pandemic still around and both he and Sakaba are hopeful for some relief soon. Daniel Perez reporting for KUAM News. The commotion at the Paseo parking lot over the weekend has already yielded the shooters in the chaos. And now three men who allegedly swung machetes, damaged vehicles, and even chased a person have been arrested. 23-year-old Marcin Kinton said he, 23-year-old Narsin Mar Marison, and 28-year-old Handarison Sony were just having a good time drinking when a man in a red shirt shot at them, according to court documents. Marison said he pulled out a machete after he felt something was about to go down when a truck came close to his vehicle and he tried to grab its tailgate. Court documents state that after hearing a close shot near him, he told his boys to go after the other group. That's when he began hitting trucks and cars with a machete. A man with his family at Paseo also identified Marison as a person who chased him with the machete. Kinton was charged with aggravated assault, reckless conduct and, and disorderly conduct. Marison was charged with criminal mischief, aggravated assault, reckless conduct, and disorderly conduct. This is not his first run-in with the law either. He also has a history of criminal activity in several other cases. Sony, who admitted he also had a machete, is being charged with reckless conduct and disorderly conduct and is currently in probation in another case. As KOM News reported, 21-year-old Evan Babata Pangalinen and 20-year-old Kyle Joaquin Toposnia self-surrendered to authorities for firing gunshots in the air during the car show as well. All of the suspects have been booked and confined at the Department of Corrections. And a report of a shoplifter on May 29 led police to a man suspected of cashing bad checks and drugs. According to court documents, police followed up on the retail theft complaint from Kmart and located the vehicle involved just up the street inside a black Kia Soul where J. Patrick Ojada Javier, 38, and Christopher Ray Crescier, 39, with lots of unopened items that were later identified as stolen. Suspected drugs and paraphernalia also were found in the vehicle, including meth discovered in a container with the name Bobat written on it. According to court documents, after he was arrested, Javier told police the pair would steal items to sell because they were homeless and living in the car. Crescier, the driver of the vehicle, was identified as a man who tried to cash several bad checks earlier this year. On March 14, 15, and 16, he tried and failed to cash what appeared to be a stimulus check and a tax refund. In February, Crescier allegedly pushed allegedly cashed a fraudulent PUA check rather at a Sinahanya store. Crescier was charged with four counts of forgery, possession of a Schedule II controlled substance, and retail theft. Javier was charged with possession of a Schedule II controlled substance and retail theft as a petty misdemeanor. And 19-year-old Chris Carson was arrested on May 30 for several charges after victims called for the police. At around 12.34 a.m., officers with the Guam Police Department received a call of a burglary after the victim heard loud noises coming from their storage room inside their residence. Carson was found exiting the storage room and after being asked for his business there, he stated it was a mistake. Carson smelled of alcohol, had bloodshot, watery eyes, slurred speech, and a strong odor of an intoxicating beverage emitting from his breath. Carson confessed that had been drinking heavily prior to being inside the residence. Carson was charged with burglary as a second degree felony, criminal trespass as a misdemeanor, and consumption of an alcoholic beverage by a person under the age of 21 as a petty misdemeanor. And the status call hearing lasted less than three minutes this afternoon with the Civil Service Commission regarding the appeal, the termination appeal of Leo Espia. As KOM reported, Espia, a longtime planner with Guam Homeland Security Office of Civil Defense, filed a letter of appeal with the CSC on April 27, stating that adverse action was taken without cause. 
when Homeland Security Advisor Samantha Brennan terminated him in April of this year for an unauthorized breach of GovGuam's network by installing a privately owned server without prior authorization by the agency. OCD Administrator Charles Estevez sent a letter to the CSC on May 11 requesting to revoke Espia's notice of final adverse action, noting it was unlawfully initiated by Brennan and that she does not have the authority. In his letter, he stated that he has had the opportunity to work with Espia and that he has a respectable reputation in the emergency management community and has a clean record. Estevez also said in his letter that after reviewing documents and timeline that Brennan's actions appear retaliatory and cites multiple complaints related to her toxic leadership style has created a hostile work environment. Today's status call went much smoother than previous hearing on May 18 with both Robert Koss, Espia's lay representative and management's rep, Assistant Attorney General Donna Lawrence agreeing to schedule a continued status call for June 8 to allow time for Lawrence to review documents from the CSC and prepare a case management statement and cost to review discovery. And still to come on your news leader, NMI residents are set to receive their second round of stimulus and later repairs on the Dedito pool are back on track after the, after the arrival of supplies. Those stories and more coming up next on KOAM. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Northern Marianas, rise up to the challenge! June 17th through June 25th, the Northern Marianas will be hosting the NM Pacific Mini Games 2022. Athletics, badminton, baseball, beach volleyball, golf, tennis, triathlon, ba and weightlifting. Visit northernmarianas2022.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks to the Tensu Lin Foundation, Joe Tendada Foundation, T Galleria, Docomo Pacific, ITE, NMC, Elan Group, Marpack, Fish Guy Scuba Charter, Atkins Coral, Glorified City Limit, McDonald's, Mobile, Triple J, NM Tech, and Bank of Guam. Say hello to the first Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Want a better look at your spending? With Money Map, you can automatically create budgets and manage where your money is going. Know when you have a green light or when it's time to slow down. Maybe cook more meals at home this week. Set your goals, track your progress, and find your way to exactly where you want to be. With Money Map from the first Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. Subscribe to our KOAM News Digest, our weekly email newsletter with all kinds of information straight to your inbox. Just subscribe and we'll make sure to keep you informed and entertained with news from the KOAM News team, what to watch on NBC and CBS, and the latest promotions from KOAM Communications. Go to KOAM.com, click on the newsletter tab at the top of the homepage, register, and you're all set. Brought to you by Uno Go, Guam On Demand. Two 10-year-old girls from Uvalde, Texas are being remembered and laid to rest today. They're the first of 21 funerals that will take place in the coming days following the gun massacre at their elementary school. Lilia Luciano reports. Mourners arrived at the funeral mass for Emery Jo Garza. She and 18 classmates were killed alongside two teachers in their fourth grade classroom one week ago today. 10-year-old Maite Rodriguez will also be laid to rest today. She looks like nothing happened to her. She looks like she died at peace. We all know the reality. Investigators say their teacher, Eva Mireles, died shielding her students from the gunman. The dog lover, mother, and wife to a police officer knew to protect. She was finishing her 17th year of teaching. As the shooting unfolded, a family member texted Eva in a group chat, asking if she was okay. There was no response. I never in my dreams thought that that my sister was not going to make it. The Department of Justice has launched a review to understand why it took law enforcement 75 minutes before going into the classroom to stop the shooter. The review is not a criminal investigation, but an opportunity to learn critical lessons for the future. Officials announced last week the school district police chief held officers outside the classroom even as students were calling 911 because he believed there was no one left alive in the room to save. Today, officers with Customs and Border Protection came to the memorial outside Rob Elementary School to lay a wreath, many clearly shaken. Also at the memorial, actor Matthew McConaughey, who grew up in Uvalde. There will be nine more funerals this week and the rest in the weeks to come. Lilia Luciano, CBS News, Uvalde, Texas. 
And as the school year winds down for many across the island and with students gearing up for summer, KUAM News followed up with the, the, Depart with the Department of Def uh, Defense Education activity to get a recap of what the last 10 months have been like for our youth. Isaiah Uggen reports. It was a smooth school year for Department of Defense Education Activity students, according to Gail Wiley, the community superintendent for Guam. It has gone really well. Uh, with the knowledge that most students learn best face to face, we continued enforcing our proven mitigation strategies to support a safe and healthy in person learning environment. Our military connected students are all exceptional. Dodea schools were the first in the nation to drop mask mandates on campuses. Wiley shared that lifting the mask wearing requirement went well. All of the students have adapted. Some students still feel comfortable wearing the mask and it is optional. We haven't had any uh, disruptions. It has been a smooth transition. And again, school, business as usual. Wiley explained that over 90 Panthers are set to graduate with the class of 2022. The future is bright for all of them and we are so excited about them. Our high school seniors, we are graduating 98 of them, and we graduated two mid-year for the class of 2022. Among our graduates, we have students joining the military and attending various colleges on scholarships. You can feel the enthusiasm in Wiley as she describes her goals for next school year in an interview with KUAM News. We look forward to an excellent uh, school year next year, even better uh, with a, without a lot of the mitigations and COVID things that we had to do. Dodea's last day of classes is set for June 7th. Reporting for KUAM News, Guahu Isaiah Ogun. And over in the NMI, the government is preparing to launch its second stimulus relief program. More than 20,000 people will be receiving cards filled with $500. If you're in the NMI, there's more federal relief for the drain in your wallet. Our current numbers are lower than the first stimulus. The first stimulus, um, I don't have the exact number of taxpayers that we, uh, I believe it was around 23,000 taxpayers uh, plus their dependents, uh, which totaled about $25 million. Right now, our numbers with the second stimulus is about 21 and a half. Uh, thousand taxpayers and their dependents and we're looking currently at 17 to 18 million dollars for the rollout. They anticipate handing out up to 3,000 more cards for non-filers who submit a tax return. The debit cards which are restricted to be spent only within the NMI could be in your PO box by June 18 or 20th. Cards will be processed by DRT through the end of the year, and if you don't use it, you'll lose it. The cards expire on January 31st, 2023. We want our, our citizens to utilize the funds um, within a period so that we can make sure that they, they um, stimulate our economy. It's, it's not a, a savings program that we're giving our citizens. It's we're giving them some subsidy so that they can spend on what they need today and what they could use for today. As it stands now, the second local stimulus is taxable, but... We will ask the legislature to, uh, again, uh, pass or amend the, amend the bill that was passed to make the 2020 stimulus non-taxable. We will ask the legislature to, again, make sure that this is non-taxable. We want this money to, uh, to uh, be circulated in our economy. Um, so that is the whole purpose of uh, uh, restricting it to the Commonwealth. And in more regional headlines, the NMI's top cop, Department of Public Safety Commissioner Robert Guerrero, was a no-show to the House of Representatives budget hearing for his department on Tuesday. Instead, Administration Director Kate Yunos, BMV Director Juana Leon Guerrero, and HR Manager Esther De Los Regis answered preliminary questions while Guerrero was in a scheduled meeting, but when the committee came back from recess, its chair had a stern warning. It seems like a lot of the questions that the members have is something that the commissioner will need to answer for himself. 
And so it has been decided that we will adjourn this meeting and call for another one on Friday where a, the option of subpoena will be on the agenda should the commissioner fail to appear before the committee on Friday. The scene in my house ways and means committee has been hosting several hearings in the past few weeks to parse through the next annual budget and the supplies to repair and improve the dead pool have finally arrived on island according to the department of parks and recreation deputy director warren pelletier with the supplies now here things are starting to pick up again installation of new perimeter lights around the pool area have already begun as koam reported back in april the silica sand used to filter out impurities from Pool water arrived on the island before all the other supplies and is one of the most important materials needed to get the pool up and running soon. And for those interested in getting a caregiver certification, you can sign up for a free two-week training with the Guam Community College. GCC is hosting a medical home health aid boot camp where participants will learn the skills needed in caregiving, one of the most high-demand industries on Guam. There are 15 seats available per cohort and runs from June 9 to the 23rd. The link to the application can be found on koam.com. The last day to apply is June 3rd by 5 p.m. And LGBTQ plus Pride Month is here. It's a time to celebrate the community, raise awareness, encourage inclusiveness, and pushing overall society to have a better attitude about sexual orientation and gender identity. It's celebrated in June across the globe because of the Stonewall riots, which occurred in 1969. To kick off the month on, on Guam, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio will host a proclamation signing ceremony and wave tomorrow. Wear a rainbow of pride colors for both events. The proclamation signing is set for 3.30 p.m. The wave is scheduled from 4 to 6 p.m. on Thursday at Chief Kapua Park in Haganya. It will also be live streamed on the governor's Facebook page. Stay tuned, don't go away because Dave Delgado has your latest roundup of local sports and still to come. Your birthday shout outs from the Coldstone Creamy Birthday Club. Keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replace And I'll be around Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you Calvo's Insurance, count on us for life Cheddar Chalupa is back, only at Taco Bell. $100 the Home Depot e-gift card. New customers can also enjoy a $100 port-in credit. GTA, we start with Dad. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.
Clutch Guam's basketball is art three on three circuit tipped off with the first tournament played at the Tumwinning Court. Two out of the 10 courts that will be painted with murals have been completed. The second court that was completed by local artist Lisa Nicholas was located in the village of Petey. We were ecstatic with how everything just turned out, everything coming together, you know, the, the beautiful art piece uh, coming together and revealing that to, to the players and their families. And then, of course, just, you know, the basketball vibes, the street vibes, the hip hop vibes all coming together uh, and, and just combining those two elements. Um, it was everything that we envisioned and we're looking forward to the next eight for sure. There are a total of three divisions that will be stepping onto the finished courts, boys ninth and 10th grade, boys 11th and 12th, and girls high school. The feedback's been, been amazing from both the players and their families and, and just everyone involved, right? So uh, just being able to get everyone out, enjoy the game of basketball in, in great weather, great conditions. Um, it, you know, the, the feedback from the community has just been awesome. We're, you know, creating ways to make it a more fun and exciting environment. You know, huge shout out to DJ Pogi, who's, you know, volunteered and committed his time to this cause, uh, as well as our, our boy on the mic, Bell. So, uh, you know, the kids are enjoying it. We have great MC, great DJ, uh, and just great vibes all around. On Saturday, games will start at 4 in the afternoon at the Agate Court and run into the evening. There will also be some food trucks on site with live music to keep the vibe going throughout the tournament. This past weekend, we had about 150 players participate in these two tournaments, and we're looking to get uh, about 150 more competing in the, in the upcoming events. We're inviting everyone, especially in the Southern community, to come out and support. Uh, we do have a, a lot of players representing the South in this circuit, so we're, we're glad to officially take the tournament down South this weekend. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific, better together. Mobile offers a new and convenient way to fuel your vehicle. Pay gas and go. No need to line up inside the store. Press preset. Enter whole dollar amount without decimals. Press loyalty ID and enter your mobile number or insert smiles card. Insert and remove payment card or tap contactless credit card. Begin fueling. And don't forget to grab your receipt. Pay gas and go. It's that easy. Sipping on a delicious drink from McDonald's may have you thinking, what makes these drinks just hit different? <laughs> Don't overthink it. Just enjoy it. It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. Cool off this summer with McDonald's Minute Maid slushies. Try the new Tropical Mango or returning favorite, Strawberry Watermelon, for a limited time. ba da ba ba, -ba. Welcome back. We wrap up the show with your birthday shout outs. Here's Jason Salas. All right, June is here, and we have two very special Guamanians, starting off with Bruce Vincent Pareto. Happy birthday and happy blessed birthday, Bruce, from everyone whose lives that you've touched and those who are proud to know you. And one of our very own here, our news director extraordinaire, Jonah Goncharfer. So <clears throat> here we go. I told her I was going to go extra. Yeah. Happy birthday to Joan, man. We love you, Joan. She has got the most awesome, awesome, awesome collection of Funko Pops, you guys. She's a really good cook. She's really awesome to talk to. I've known her for so long now. Joan, all of us at KUM, your family, are wishing you the very best birthday ever. And yeah. happy birthday. See, twice. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, apologies if your speakers blew out. Joan wanted to wish you a happy birthday. You can be part of our Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by checking out KUAM.com. That's it for primetime. Please stay safe, Guam and the NMI. <laughs>